This is The Truth of the Times, Episode 8, Will the Real Horace Please Stand Up? I'm your host, Benford Sansbury. This series is dedicated to the examination of conspiracy theory videos, the extermination of falsehoods, and the due recognition of factual knowledge. Currently under review is the film Zeitgeist. For those of you who may be watching the series for the first time, I highly recommend you start from episode 3. For our viewers in Germany, episode 5 was blocked on YouTube, but is available on other sites like Mega Video and LiveLeak. Feel free to copy any or all of my videos and repost them anywhere you like. In our last episode, we began to talk about Horus and Set. Here is what Peter Joseph has to say about these two Egyptian deities. Metaphorically speaking, every morning Horus would win the battle against Set, while in the evening Set would conquer Horus and send him into the underworld. This metaphor relies on Horus representing day and Set representing night. However, as we have seen in episode 7, their personas are not a clear-cut duality in this respect. There is another part of this statement that contradicts other versions of this story. Every morning, every morning, every morning, every morning. It was not some eternal phenomena. Peter Joseph's version of Egyptian history once again comes from Acharya S. Acharya states that Set and Apep are actually the same character, despite this hieroglyph which shows Set killing Apep. Whoops! She also calls Horus and Set twins, which only applied to Egyptian mythology for a short period of time. The pyramid texts did describe Horus and Set as brothers, but the genealogy was later clarified in the Book of the Dead. The Egyptian writings from 1500 BC titled going forth by day, known in the vernacular as the Book of the Dead. Horus would win the battle against Set, while in the evening Set would conquer Horus and send him into the underworld. Acharya describes Horus and Set as a good versus evil duality, twins in a sense, who have the exact same relationship as Jesus and Satan. No reference is given. Most Christians would not accept that Jesus and Satan are twins, though it is very fair to consider them a duality. As far as the natures of Horus and Set, they are more imperfect. This point was already discussed in previous videos, but let's build on this point that Horus and Set are not perfect representations of good and evil by exploring the Book of the Dead. Horus drives Set off, probably in the desert, since Set is the god of the desert. Furthermore, Set has a confederacy of rebels who travel with him, erected a temple, and were killed after he repeated his offenses. Here Set is still alive somewhere, as one person, known as the Messenger, even wishes for someone to cut out his heart. He is also described as a pig, who is captured and later released. There's definitely some rivalry, but at the same time, the Book of the Dead gives both Horus and Set great respect as powerful authority figures and gods. Basically, Horus is mostly noble, and Set has a string of mischievous downfalls, but can be noble at times. It is important to note that dark versus light, or good versus evil, is one of the most ubiquitous mythological dualities ever known, and is still expressed on many levels to this day. Good versus evil is not always so clear-cut in mythology. Egyptian mythology and Greco-Roman mythology are full of characters who are more protagonistic and antagonistic, rather than being clear-cut heroes and villains. However unrelated this statement is to the actual mythology, standing out of context, it holds true for many mythologies, especially today. Oddly speaking, the story of Horus is as follows. Horus was born on December 25th of the Virgin Isis Mary. Let's examine where this statement comes from. Peter Joseph quotes two sources. The first is Gerald Massey's The Historical Jesus and the Mythical Christ, published in 1883. Massey did not cite any source or an Egyptian writing stating that Horus was born on the 25th of December. Instead, he assumes this is true because he already views Mithra and Christ and Horus as one. Using this statement in this way to prove Christ is plagiarized version of Horus is circular reasoning. The second source Peter Joseph cites is Clerk Stephens's Religions of the Ancient Greeks published in 1778. Now it was difficult to find this text because Peter Joseph misquoted the author, who is really Le Clerc Deceptionnaire. Le Clerc says Isis, mother of Horus, 
delivered sometime around the end of December, which is not so exact. Moreover, he doesn't have a citation. There seems to be a great deal of contradiction in the field of Egyptology as to when the birth of Horus occurred. Egyptologist Anthony J. Spallinger said it occurred in the fifth lunar month, which isn't tied to the movement of the sun at all, and would wander through the solar calendar. Although I still haven't heard his source for this information, Dr. Spallinger was kind enough to email me and note that it was definitely not December 25th. Egyptologist Dr. Olafi Kaper says the birthday of Horus occurred in April, in the Egyptian month of Farmuthi, which seems to be based on writings in Edfu. Dr. Kaper was contacted and hasn't gotten back to me to confirm this yet. Another Egyptian source claims that the birthday of Horus is celebrated on July 15th. This according to the Cairo calendar of Lucky and Unlucky Days, a papyrus in the Cairo Museum, which is further validated by another papyrus, Salier 4, which contains identical information. Perhaps all of these dates were correct at one time during Egyptian history. But so far, according to the Egyptians themselves and the Egyptologists, this December 25th date is nowhere to be found. Horus was born on December 25th of the Virgin Isis Mary. Here. Peter Joseph is not only stating Horus was born of a virgin, but that Isis is, for some reason, Isis Mary. First of all, this totally conflicts with the hymn of Amun Mose, which details the sexuality between Osiris and Isis. Now let's see what arguments Peter Joseph has against actual Egyptian writings. Peter Joseph quotes four sources. The first is Thomas Doan's Bible Myths and Their Parallels in Other Religions, published in 1884. Thomas Doan gets an A for citing his sources for a change. He alludes to Bonwick's Egyptian Belief, published in 1878. On page 141, James Bonwick explains that because both Isis and the Virgin Mary have black statues, and Isa means female in some unknown language, then they must be the same. Bonwick does not state any source of real information or writings. Being a poor school teacher in Australia, he probably did not have access to actual Egyptian dictionaries, or he would have known that Isis means seat or throne. Peter Joseph's second source is, once again, Gerald Massey's The Historical Jesus and The Mythical Christ, published in 1883. Massey here says that Plutarch called Isis a virgin, though he doesn't say which writing this comes from. Plutarch was a Greek historian who lived between 46 and 120 AD, and he wrote quite a bit. Most likely, Massey is referring to Plutarch's work, Isis and Osiris. Plutarch says that they were twins, who, quote, consorted together in the darkness of the womb before their birth, and goes on to list other instances of non-virgin activity. He also writes that Horus offers sacrifice to the sun, even though earlier Peter Joseph said that Horus was the sun. The word virgin appears nowhere in Plutarch's account, leading one to wonder if Massey and Peter Joseph read Plutarch at all. The third source is Manley Hall's The Secret Teachings of All Ages, published in 1928. Mr. Hall states that Isis morphed into the Virgin Mary, without offering any real explanation or citation. He does include a quote from Apuleius, and I'm not making this up, from the 11th book of the Golden Ass, in which Isis declares she is each and every aspect of nature, and the avatar of several gods and goddesses. The novel, which is not mythological canon, by any means, does not credit Isis with being a virgin or relating to Mary either. Lastly, Peter Joseph cites Massey's book, again, but reading further in the book, one does find mention that an Egyptian goddess, Hathor, who is the goddess of love, said Mary in Egyptian, who is also Isis because she became Horus's mother, and therefore the Virgin Mary is Isis. Did you follow that? No. <laughs> Mary actually means beloved, or desired, and is a title conferred upon several deities in Egyptian mythology. The Aramaic form of Mary is Maryam, the meaning of which, though debated, is thought to mean beloved by Yahweh. The similarity does exist in Egyptian, however, the similarities between how Mary and Mary sound in English are pure coincidence, and all the evidence points to Isis being very unlike the Virgin Mary altogether. Well, that's all the time we have left in this episode of The Truth of the Times. As you can see, it wasn't all junk. There was some educational stuff in there. You just gotta dig for it. Join us next time when we dig even further and talk about some astronomy and movement of the stars. <laughs>